Hi everyone, so let's now take a look at calculating our elasticities of demand and just looking back over that theory that we covered in year, year 12 so that we can really back up uh, what the Marshall Learner condition says about the fact that it will require the long run elasticities of imports and exports to be greater than one if we are going to see this improvement in the trade balance position. Okay, so let's remind ourselves firstly of the price elasticity of demand formula. So it's the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price, of course. Uh, now, we can work out two different elasticities. We can work out our short run elasticities of demand for exports and imports from point A through to point B. And we can calculate our long run elasticities of demand from point A through to point C here, okay? Uh, so as we move from point A to B, we can see that there is a reduction in the price level of exports. There is a slight increase in the quantity demanded, okay? Now, if you actually apply the uh, change divided by original times 100 formula, uh, i.e. doing 5 divided by 15 uh, multiplied by 100, you will get a 33% change in the actual price, 0.3 recurring. Uh, now, meanwhile, you will also, and you can see this quite straight, uh, quite easily here, um, 10 to 12 is obviously a 20% increase in the quantity demanded. Now, that would give rise to uh, a price elasticity of demand for exports in the short run between A and B of uh, minus 0 0.6. Okay, but as people begin to understand uh, and adapt their expectations to that depreciation, contracts expire, uh, holiday makers uh, who had previously booked onto a particular uh, location can actually now think, oh, there's been a depreciation there. Uh, that means meals out, restaurant meals, uh, and just going there generally is going to be uh, more affordable. Um, so they can pick different de uh, destinations. And of course, UK in 2017, uh, summer 2017, there have never been as many holiday makers from abroad as there were in the UK during that summer period. Okay, so that didn't happen incidentally in summer 2016. So uh, yeah, certainly holiday makers uh, may reflect this J-curve quite nicely. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move it on. We can also see that when it comes to imports, there's uh, yeah, a 50% increase in the price level. Okay, but there's no change in the quantity demanded. Thus, we end up with zero and we end up with 0.6. Okay, when you actually uh, ignore the uh, negative figure that you would derive there. Okay, so where you've got 0.6, we can see that the Marshall Lerner condition is not upheld because the sum total of those elasticities is not greater than one. Okay, uh, so let's now have a look at our long run elasticities. Um, so we're still working from this price change from 15 down to 10. Okay, so that therefore gives us that same 33% change. And of course, that's a minus 33% uh, reduction there that's taking place. Meanwhile, however, we can see the actual quantities of exports have risen from 10 through to 30. That's a 200% rise. And this would equal uh, a very, very price sensitive demand for our exports, okay, of uh, minus six. Again, we'll disregard the, uh, the negative. Um, we've got imports, well, it's a 50% change in the price and it's a 50% reduction in the actual quantity demanded here, okay? So this one's positive, this one's our negative, of course, and that would equal, of course, minus one there. So disregarding uh, the negative there, well, we can see that the uh, Marshall Lerner condition is nicely upheld there. Okay, uh, now hopefully that gives you a really good understanding of why this principle is important, okay? But it's not to say that, for instance, with the uh, exports of the UK, that they are necessarily price elastic. We know that price elastic goods tend to have a lot of substitutes. They uh, tend not to be well differentiated. They're not the most sophisticated of products in essence, okay? Um, as such, there are going to be substitutes elsewhere. Uh, now, when it comes to the UK exports, you've then got to pose the question, 
are they price elastic or are they more price inelastic? If they are more price inelastic, we are not going to benefit, our export industries are not going to benefit so well from a depreciation of the pound. As a, um, so, you know, that's that's a really, really important point to consider in relation to your evaluation of this. It's no good carrying out uh, a depreciation of your currency if your exports are price inelastic in both the short run and the long run because it will not lead to this improvement, okay? Um, moreover, it's also just worth considering the fact that other countries may wish to carry out competitive depreciations should you actually depreciate your currency. And that's known as beggar thy neighbour depreciations. That's not a nice, uh, nice place to be in. Uh, that's all about currency wars and it gets very nasty there. Okay, great stuff guys. Thanks a lot.